The natural logarithm is the integral of 1 over x dx. On this plot of e to the x versus x, consider the location x equals x2. y on x2 equals e to the x2, which is equal to e to the x2 minus x1 plus x1, all of that stuff in the exponent, because the negative x1 and the positive x1 cancel. Using the addition rule for exponents, we write e to the x2 minus x1 times e to the x1. But e to the x1 is just the height of our turquoise curve at x1, namely y on x1. Dividing both sides by y on x1, we find that the ratio between the height of the curve at x2 and the height of the curve at x1 equals e to the x2 minus x1, the base e taken to the horizontal distance between the x values. Take a moment to stare at this pattern. If you see this kind of relationship between a ratio of heights and a distance between horizontal positions or durations between times, this is a tip-off that you are working with an exponential function, perhaps in disguise. Call the horizontal distance between x1 and x2, call it delta x so that the figure is relabeled with x1 renamed as x and x2 renamed as x plus delta x. Updating the equation in accordance, we have y on x plus delta x over y on x equals e to the delta x. Put the y on x back on the right and then expand e to the delta x as a power series, 1 plus delta x plus delta x squared over 2 factorial plus delta x cubed over 3 factorial and so forth. Subtract y on x from both sides. This means removing the constant term 1 from the series. And now divide both sides by delta x and take the limit as delta x goes to 0. This limiting process in turquoise equals this limiting process in gold. The turquoise expression is dy dx and the gold expression is y. A defining differential equation for the exponential curve is dy dx equals y, which shouldn't be surprising because we already showed that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x itself. Using a separation of variables, which is of course just shorthand notation for a change of variables, we divide, so to speak, both sides by y, and then we slap on integral signs with matched integration boundaries, or also call them integration limits. If we were being careful, the integral dy over y would be written out integral of 1 over y dy, to avoid suggesting that dy were some quantity that could be divided by y. The turquoise integral on the right, running from x equals x0 to xf, corresponds to the gray integral on the left, running from y equals y on x0 to y on xf. The right-hand side is simply the difference xf minus x0. Ignoring the vertical bars for a moment, the indefinite integrals are instructions to look up the pattern integral 1 over y dy in integration tables. The vertical bars and subtraction then indicate that the answers found in the integration tables are to be applied to the values y equals y on xf and y equals y on x0, and the two corresponding outputs are to be subtracted. Let's deduce the pattern we will find in the integration table corresponding to the indefinite integral dy over y. If we exponentiate xf minus x0, we should get, as noted a couple slides ago, the ratio y on xf over y on x0. We can apply the natural log to both sides, which undoes the exponential so that we get xf minus x0, again exposed. Just according to the line above, the difference between the indefinite integrals evaluated at y on xf and y on x0. A short aside for a useful property. We want the natural log of the ratio a over b. To both a and b, apply a natural log and then a compensating exponentiation. Lift the denominator e to the natural log b into the numerator by writing it with a negative 1 power. Because e to the x exhibits the multiplication rule for powers, the negative 1 power of e to the natural log b is also e to the negative natural log b. 
because e to the x exhibits the addition rule for powers, e to the natural log a times e to the negative natural log b is the common base e taken to the power natural log a minus natural log b. But the natural log outside undoes the e, so what started out as natural log a over b turns out to be natural log a minus natural log b. This means that the natural log of the ratio y on xf over y on x0 can be written as the difference natural log on y on xf minus natural log on y on x0. Rearrange the terms so that the pieces that vary with xf are grouped together and the pieces that vary with x0 are grouped together. We obtain a difference between square brackets equal to zero. Call the turquoise pieces that depend on xf, call them q on y on xf. The gold stuff is exactly the same instructions as in the turquoise, except applied to x0 instead of xf. Call the gold pieces q on y on x0. Suppose we knew of a particular pair of values where the turquoise stuff minus the gold stuff were precisely equal to zero as expressed in this equation. Hold y on x0 constant, but let y on xf move. In order for the difference between the turquoise and gold stuff to remain precisely equal to zero, q on y on xf must not vary with y on xf. Thus, q on stuff is a constant with respect to stuff. Therefore, the indefinite integral of dy over y, whereby indefinite we mean lacking a well-defined pair of initial and final boundaries, and being instead evaluated, so to speak, at a single point y, this indefinite integral equals natural log on y plus c. We used the idea of continuously compounded interest to define e to the x as a limiting process on an expression with a binomial. This is equivalent to specifying a power series. e to the x looks like a number, call it e, roughly equal to 2.7, taken to the power x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x itself. The inverse of e to the x is the natural logarithm, and the natural logarithm is the antiderivative of 1 over x.